You are now locked into Radio Juxtapose, the home of contemporary art and culture conversation. Coming up today. When I paint, I paint in a way. When I do collage, I, I, I do collage in another way because I, I'm more focused on what those materials can create another aesthetic, another even other universe that can open. This is Radio Juxtapose. Back in London in 2013, it was far from unusual to catch an artist painting in an East End car park on a sun-soaked summer's day. But on this particular day, there was something distinctly unusual about this artist I found myself locked onto. I was mesmerised, stood there watching this wee brush dance across a white brick surface as if I was watching some kind of sorcery in action. A thick trail of brown substance I would later discover to be tar tracing its steps whilst gradually building this recognisable shape of a bear. Seeing the rhythms and the movements it came as no surprise to later find out that this particular wizard had tango in his blood and jazz in his name. It's hard to pin down exactly how to describe the work of Argentinian artist Franco Fasoli purely because there are so many sides to the work of Franco Fasoli. It could be the colour collages, the powerful bronzes, the politics, the murals, the lions, the tigers, or even the bears. Oh my. Welcome to the Radio Juxtapose podcast. Today's conversation with Jazz is hosted by Juxtapose magazine's Evan Preco and myself, Doug Gillen. It's only taken us two years, but we have now finally managed to set up our own Radio Juxtapose account on Instagram, so be sure to join us over there. Give us a follow, let us know your thoughts, any questions. It's already been really great to hear directly from you all. We're really excited to bring this episode to you today. So, from a petrol station somewhere on the outskirts of Buenos Aires, Franco Fasoli. Wait, I want to know more about this countryside that you're at. You're on vacation or has this been like the permanent uh, pandemic vacation? No, no. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm in Argentina right now. I've been, I've been moving from Spain to here after, right after I, I have the chance to travel. And here it's uh, summertime. So this is like the first kind of vacation that I have. And a friend of mine has, uh, has a huge piece of land here. And uh, yeah, I just came just to chill, swim, and uh, but it's right, maybe like a two hours out of the city, right in the middle of nowhere, just cows and plants everywhere. Sounds so amazing. I have to came to the small town uh, to get the Wi-Fi because it's not even signal there. What is like in the region that you're at right now? Like, what is like the um like the regional food? Like what is like the, the meal of this region that- This is barbecue, barbecue land. This, this okay. is hardcore barbecue land all the time. Meat and meat and meat all the time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's like the traditional food from this part of the country. I mean, generally from the country, but especially from this part of the country, because uh, it's the, the biggest thing that we produce is our cows and food right. and, uh, and, and meat. So you are a meat eater? Yeah, but I mean, I, you know, I, I was living in Spain for so many years that I, I became more like a like a sea animal, uh, sea animals and fish and all that eater mm -hmm. that I'm really missing right now because here it's quite hard. Uh, so I left the uh, I left the the meat for a while, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, now that I'm here back. You've been based in Barcelona for quite some time now. Do you regularly go back? For all the years that I've been living in Spain, I've been coming back to my city maybe once a year, okay. sometimes two or three times a year. Uh, but now I decide to move here for a long period, I mean, mostly because of um, the pandemic. Yeah, I heard about this one. Yeah, <laughs> the whole perspective. <laughs> but it was really, really hard to make it in, during this year. But also because of, uh, you know, family and mm -hmm. things like a very, very closer things that I really needed. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in Spain, I've been living with, uh, with my partner for all this time, but uh, we didn't have a family and nothing there. Mm -hmm. So we really needed. 
So we decide just to come here, uh, but of course, just uh, with the idea of coming back. I mean, I, I, I go back to Spain in, in, in three months. It's, if everything is okay, mm -hmm. I go in back there and I'm gonna spend the, the, the summer also there. So that's, that's the plan. This is like my key plan for the next couple of years, uh, try to make half and half. How does it feel then when you go back to Argentina? Because it has such a huge part in your life, especially during your formative years. And I just wonder how that's changed over the years. Yeah, I mean, it, it has been changing a lot. I mean, of course, uh, spending up, out, time outside, it makes you feel, uh, it, you see the whole thing in different perspective, like problems, realities, friends, and all that. Uh, but since I'm, since I, I, I'm out, uh, for example, the, the whole movement where I, that were, where I was uh, taking part of, of course, the, the mural and graffiti and the whole thing, it changed so much. It was just an explosion here. Mm. Uh, also, the the art world. I mean, it, the, the 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 years passing by, and new people just show up. They are working in a, in an amazing way. New spaces, new projects, and me as a as a people as a person that it came like frequently, but not full time. You you see that change is like a, like crazy like a, wow this spot it doesn't exist anymore but this other spot change this neighborhood is now in the hype now this neighborhood is uh, totally fucked up like all those changes especially in a country like this that it's a very schizophrenic country like things change uh, really really extreme uh, politically and economically mm. uh, you really can see like huge uh, huge uh, moves from things I don't know it's something that I really really enjoy like um, it really it really fits me uh, and and being in a foreigner for so many years in a country that I love like Spain uh, it it's it feels that I that I was kind of in in this really comfortable bubble that I really need to come back here feed with all these realities that I from, from where I came from and that uh, fits me with a uh, another kind of energies and those moves the, the people that it was growing up with me all the things i think that i'm loving right now do you end up feeling a little bit like an outsider when you come back or do you feel like you're home with that art scene kind of growing and changing like do you feel like one of the argentinian artists that helped establish this stuff or do you feel a little bit like wow i've been in spain a little bit too long it, it happens it happens to that feeling of being an outsider it's a uh, it's 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 strong right now you know, I, I've been growing and creating, being part of the that scene here for a long period of time. But since the last seven years, I've been mostly outside. Also, I was an outsider in Spain in some in some point because I, I wasn't from there. I wasn't in a full time in the in the movement there. So I always feel in this kind of bridge between sides, between movements, between countries and realities. And also in the in in the art world, in the in the whole art world, in the whole perspective, you know, like uh, coming from graffiti and then move to another other movement, like being in the move, it's uh, it's uh, it became something normal for me too. But now I'm feeling in the as you say in the in, like in my home in my hometown. No, right now is not the best. Is not of course is not the best time because of uh, mm -hmm. pandemic and cataclysm and all these things but i i feel that it's a really good uh, starting point in some in some in some way i i ran a whole new studio i have a new partners uh, working like that kind of things are really really interesting in in search about how does the argentina that you know now differ to the argentina that you knew when you were a young kid how 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 different it is? Yeah, because when you were a kid, it was like the end of the dictatorship, and you were this new democracy. And I wonder how it differs when you go back now. Wow, that's that's uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it feels that there's so many so many different life happened since then. I I was born in the the beginning of the eighties, and here the dictatorship ended in the eighty three. So I was literally born in the in the during the dictatorship. And 80s was a very weird period of time. I was very young, but I re I have clear, very clear remembers from there. How old are you, sorry? I'm I'm almost 40 and 39. 
Me too. Yeah. Franco and I coming in. But I, I, I really feel that, for example, here in, the, in Argentina, 90s was a very particular period of time. The booming of this weird economy that it was also worldwide. Here it was very shocking because coming from the dictatorship, uh, that it was very na nationalistic kind of dictatorship. And this in the 90s, what this explosion where we can have access access to uh, travel to Europe, travel to United States, like uh, that 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 uh, kind of uh, cultural explosion in that way was cool. But at the same time, now in perspective, I can feel how how weird it was and how how fucked up f was for the economy. And that I can feel it in the in the in the economical crash that we have in the 2001. That it was our big uh, economical crash, like the same as uh, in Greece, for example, like that kind of level. It was it was like a many different life, no, in in, in short periods of time. Uh, I started to paint, especially graffiti, and studying in the art school in the in the nineties. So during that time, I remember that that all the materials and all the information it was very very easy very very cheap we, you can go to tower records and buy graffiti magazines and you can get all this information and then during the 2001 during this crazy economical crash uh, that that was like the, the, the that was the change for us no like that was a period of um, really really hard to to get goods to get uh, a job, to get um, that was really hardcore, and that affects me because I was 18 during that time. You know, when you have to start to work and you have to, I don't know, to make your to to make your things, and that was a really really key point. But at the same time, it was interesting to re study on the local scene in a very different way, and th I think that helps helps a lot especially in myself in my in my in, in my case because i was very focused in what happened outside and that helped me to to focus in what happened in my city in my country that's where that that was the time where i start really start to reach and study about art history from my country and uh, and that helped me just to to grow up in my in my business and my work in my in my pers perspective as an artist then during the the mid 20s was when the like the the first trips and the first connection with people from outside start to happen, but from the end of nineties till the mid of twenty uh, two thousands was like a two different worlds, totally different worlds. Mm -hmm. I think I think you mentioned this in the Juxtapose interview in, in our magazine a couple years ago. But what did you when you went to art school and you were about to come out? What was it that you were hoping to do with art? Were you, what did you, what did you study and what did you, like, what did you, were there like, did you think like, I'm going to have an exhibition career or were you sort of, what, what, what was like the kind of, what was going on in your head at that time? Uh, I was more focused in the stage design. You know, I've been working in stage design, especially for theater and cinema for a couple of years. And my background in art school and the art university was more focused in, in about the stage design. So everything was around the theater and working for other people. But yeah, during during my art school, it wasn't really clear if I gonna have or if I gonna focus in an art career. It was more about learn some tools and then put it in uh, for 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 something. No, like and and stage design was very clear in that. You yeah. paint for for this whole thing that you work with other people. So that was my perspective. I thought that I'm going to be working. Uh, I, I set up a small company with other friends about stage design. So that was for me the most, uh, the, the focus during that time. You're talking about using art as a trade. It's like not coming out and going, hey, I'm going to be a famous artist. It's like, there's a job. There's a job for you here. Did it feel like there was opportunity there for you to have gone down this other path where you would be an independent artist? It was it was quite hard. It started that 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 uh, that feeling started when I started to travel. When I started to travel and I started to make connections with uh, other art scenes in different parts of the world, and, and that gave me the chance to 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 focus more into that uh, around 2011 that it was the first time that I that I attended <coughs> the first uh, street art festivals that I've been attending 
I was working stage design. So stage design was like my economical supporter. And that gave me the chance to start to dig into my career. And then in some point, a switch. It was a little switch that I, that I, okay, I say, okay, sorry, guys, to my partners. I give you all the, <laughs> all the, my part of my little, my little business and bye. I gonna just paint. Are they still and it was funny because I, so, I was, I was uh, like uh, using the same studio uh, that I've been using for stage design as my painting studio. Is that awkward? I, I mean, it was, it was kind of comfortable because I okay. see from the perspective how, how hard and how crazy was that stage design world that I was like, oh no, guys, I don't want to come. As you're walking up at 11 o'clock with a cup of coffee and a cigarette. <laughs> Wait, so was, was graffiti always happening at the same time? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, graffiti started in the 98, 90 something. But it okay. takes me a long period of time, long period of deconstruction of what it was graffiti for me to came up with murals. And at the same time, stage design helps me to think and, 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 and the skills to work in the larger scale. So it's kind of combination of both. But graffiti right. was there since since the beginning yeah you just said something really interesting there so what was graffiti for you mm -hmm. what it was graffiti during that time i mean uh, imagine that yeah i started with 15 something like that i was really into the bmx scene at that time okay. you know i was okay. uh, in contest of bmx and all that and it was the first the first spot i mean skate park and of course th those areas it was the first time that you can see some graffitis and during that time here, it was a huge invention of Brazilian graffiti, graffiti writers. Right. I mean, Oshemios, right. Biche, Aspeto, they show up here during that time. So for me, it was more like, a, wow, what is this thing? I mean, is this language that, it, that is kind of connected with me, but at the same time, I have no information, no idea. Uh, and I was drawing all the time. So it was, okay, it's being part of this scene of bike skateboard scene, but at the same time is this art scene. For me, it was more about that. It wasn't so much about like, uh, the rebellion of going out and getting over. It was more about, okay, I, I can paint outside and nobody really cares. You, you have to also imagine that, that right. in a crazy society as my hometown society, Painting graffiti wasn't a huge problem, so it was quite easy. It wasn't something that you are really breaking the law. It was more about just go out and enjoy with your friends in some park. And I take it in for that, like the community, mix it with uh, hip hop and skateboard. Like it was more about that. It was being part of a scene that it was super small at that time, mm. uh, but that was the keystone for for then. So it wasn't even. It wasn't even weird then to be working in set design, stage design, and to do graffiti as well. Like did the guys that you were working with, they didn't think, did they, were they like, wow, you go out at night and do this stuff? There was no kind of, there was, was there ever a conversation about like, how are you doing all this? I used a lot of graffiti for the stage design. I mean, every, every commercial, everything that it happens in, in, I mean, in publicity or cinema here, they call me for make the graffiti. So almost all the graffiti mm. that it was in the screen or in the background during that time, it was made by me or other friends that I share like the studio with them, like Ever and those guys. Mm. So yeah. um, it was a part of was part of the job. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. A second. Did are there like are there like jazz tags in uh, like Argentinian commercials that we need to now see? It can be. I mean, I also <laughs> appear my hand in some commercials, like spray painting, uh, like a. <laughs> Hand, hand model and that things. I mean, you imagine that it was a super small thing. And uh, because my connection with stage design, it was like, okay, Franco, let's call Franco for that sense. So it was a, also was a, a way to make money doing graffiti mixed with stage design. It was a very, very fun time, especially when they called me for that, like graffiti writers, go, 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 go. And you just paint and they record that, that scene. It was, it was interesting. Now it looks so, so long ago. What what is your what did your artwork look like at that point? Like the stuff that you were doing outside of these other things that you were doing. My artwork, I mean, it was kind of mixed between like bio 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 characters, bio characters uh, mixed with a uh, with uh, can can control skills. 
okay. with a lot of influence from uh, Oschemios, of course. Oschemios influenced a lot of graffiti writers here. Mm. Uh, that kind of characters. Uh, I wasn't so much into lettering since the beginning. I was really, really bad in lettering. I didn't make so many bombing. I didn't make so many trains. I, I of course, I've been I've been connected with all those guys and. Uh, we shared the same scene, but I was more into the mural since the beginning. So I was the one who made the characters, who the one who made the, the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And my first like canvas and approach uh, approach to the to like the studio work was through there. It was using using sprays and using those kind of languages. That it was also a, a key moment during that time, during the middle of two thousands, when I started to travel and I started to see like the first kind of street art out of the graffiti. I wonder how Argentinian graffiti differed to the rest of Latin America, like say Os Gemios in Brazil. Like, did you have something uniquely Argentinian? During the time that I was really into, more into the graffiti before, like more murals and street, I think, uh, me and other friends, we pick up some, some things from the local culture, like uh, Fileteado, for example, that is this, uh, way to decor like very very combined with tango culture and all that we pick up that just to to use as a, as a tool for for give some character to the to the graffiti scene i mean we are talking very very long time ago no mm -hmm. when when we just use a kind of decorative way to to give some profile like okay oshemios and brazilian scene has something really like that you can say okay that's brazilian graffiti for sure yes. and because we have that influence uh or I'm, I'm always talking about myself no i can talk sure. about the whole scene because uh, at, during the time we were very small and you have of course different groups but me and some friends we decide to just pick up that kind of very char characteristic things from the city and use it especially in the lettering then for, in my case, give us give me the chance to to transform and mutate into other thing that also have some kind of connection with a local scene. Till the time that I start to work with hooliganism, and, but it wasn't something like like in general, no. Like uh, okay, let's let's put a mark of the graffiti, Argentinian graffiti. It was very mixed. Mm -hmm. At the same time that the Brazilians came, a lot of German artists came also at that time, like Dime. Uh, Lumit, uh, those kind of graffiti writers that also give us another perspective. Some Chilean artists also came. So it was very mixed at that time. Did you say tango culture? Yes. Sorry, just because I've never heard somebody say tango culture before. Can you <laughs> just maybe tell us a little bit about what tango culture is? I mean, <laughs> you know that, um, yeah, Buenos Aires is, is one of the, the meccas of the tango, of the tango music right. and the tango thing. Right, right. And that came also like combined with the whole aesthetic, you know, and it okay. was something that it was very common in the bars and the, on the trucks and the, that it was very decorative painting that it helps, you know, the lettering and some kind of, um, I mean, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to explain with words, but it was always uh, combined with a, especially the name, a name of a bar. Mm -hmm. and with this decor decorative uh, way of way of uh, paint that it's called fileteado that's like the proper ah, name okay. that uh, uh, yeah. Okay. yeah yeah so it, it was i mean tango culture is a, it's a very big, big way to englobe the whole thing it, it, it wasn't so specific but it was very buenos aires thing uh very okay. some neighborhoods of buenos aires that also are the neighborhood where the tango mostly started mm -hmm. so i kind of combined it uh, and for for me and for some other friends, it was like, a, let's pick up this and let's pick up that and use it as a, as a tool for doing graffiti. And uh, yeah, we've been painting murals a lot with that kind of aesthetic. And some point it was like, okay, done. Let's finish with that. Let's jump into something else that also can talk about the city, but in a different way. We got to ask, do you do you tango? I was going to ask that same question. No, Shit. but my brother, yes. <laughs> it's just one of those things that's stupid asking an Argentinian if they tango because the answer is just always going to be yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that kind of yes, thing. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really bad playing football. I'm really, I, I'm not into tango, but it was really into my family. I mean, my my grandmother and my grandfather been listening tango every day. I mean, it was their music. Yeah. Uh, my brother also used to dance tango, but it, it, it's, it's it's that thing that is right there. You've kind of spoken about this a little bit, but what you you traveled and all of a sudden you you began to see this kind of like new wave of art on the streets starting to happen, and maybe part of that first you start seeing that first generation of muralists or uh, in a street art that was kind of exploding. What? kind of did you did you start feeling it you go oh this is this is where i can find my way like did you immediately find a connection with what was happening yeah it was it was very shocking the first time i mean i landed for first time uh, to barcelona in the mid of 2000s uh, during the time that barcelona was definitely one of the the, the most important cities in terms of uh, new aesthetics in graffiti you know like um see see that thing for me was like a like a heat in the head like a boom like wow this is something that that i'm more interested than in just go and bombing also other people who came to argentina help us to see another perspective you know that during those years in the mid 2000s end of 2000s uh blue the italian artist uh, come here to Buenos Aires many times, the first animation he made here. And of course, because of the connection with the public space, we are, me and other friends, we are like the first uh, contacts that he has. And during that time, I mean, like paint with poles and make huge murals with uh, just a ladder. It was kind of new also for for me and for, for us. Uh, and I think also like in the street are seen so it was it was a was a help for us just to be in contact with him and see that new languages that can you that we can use in the public space. Uh, but definitely for me it was a little bit before in Barcelona uh, when I've been there and it was like wow what those guys right. are doing like what those guys are doing like using this even this even using the spray can in a totally different way like just destroy the spray can and use this, those splashes. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't matter if you are using brushes. I remember all those taboos that I can start to just destroy after being the first time in Barcelona. Uh, so also because of, uh, Barcelona was very important for me because uh, it was like a reborn in many different ways. I want to get into the influence of Barcelona in a minute, but just like when you started doing festivals, did you like have that realization that like shit all the argentinians are here there was definitely something going on in argentina at that point so yeah it was like <laughs> yeah it was a little little by little imagine that because of this geographic distance that argentina has every time that you travel it's uh it's it's for long periods of time and um, the first time we traveled together i mean for example me and ever it was like the first duo that we start to attend some festivals. And after that, uh, all the friends just uh, come with us. And because it was a long period of time traveling all together, we create this kind of group of artists, especially, I mean, me, Ever, Elian, and Pastel, for example, no? that it was uh, these four guys going almost to everything together. But because of this situation of, uh, okay, we, we, we have to organize a trip that is going to take us maybe three three months out of the town. And uh, we help us. You know, it was more this kind of sense of community out of the city, out of the country, mm. that create this perspective of group. Then, uh, of course, uh, that helps other people and other people sh uh, start to, to come with us. And then, of course, that those uh, that group of People uh, start to make their own career. I stay in Spain and I start another another uh, group of people. But I remember that during those first festivals, it was very very common that we travel all together, mm -hmm. and that creates I, I, the same thing. I remember that we took the same situations during one of the festivals in or one of the Art Basel in Miami with the Australian artists. That we talk about that geographical distance there once that you are out of australia for example or out of argentina that is so far that you can go to 
Europe and you start to travel to Europe, you you get you create this little ghetto of people that oh uh, now we're gonna be traveling for so long. Imagine that during those times, I, me and ever we try to connect different festivals that maybe one in this is in this month and the next one is in the other month. So we during those gaps we've been traveling together around other countries or we staying in somewhere else places and that create these little ghettos those little bubbles that in our case i remember that it was a very very fun and very very characteristic like oh they are coming like <laughs> very loud that had to help though too right yeah of course it was a big 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 help for us i mean once go to a festival and then uh, help to uh, the other one and not with this sense of okay we are doing we are doing something good for the art scene for our the argentinian art scene it was more because uh it was this kind of survival uh, outside yeah. experience no like we are here in this new continent let's get all together and let's figure it out and during the those the boom of the festivals it was a very 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 classic for us okay during this period of time, we're going to travel and we're going to see if we're going to be all together. Then, of course, uh, we start to, 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 to make it, this group bigger, like from people from Puerto Rico, people from Mexico, you know, like also the Spanish speakers all together and know each other. And the, the bubble was growing, growing. The bubble got bigger. I remember in London when I think it was Alexi Diaz was doing his show. And it was like the whole Latin America was there. It was like you, Alexi, Inti, Ellie, and Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, just, we just show up. Yeah, I really remember that. It was like the last, if I'm completely honest, it was like the last time I really loved the London street art scene because it was just like, it kind of felt like how it felt before things started to get so commercial. It was just, yeah, it was a really beautiful summer. Yeah, it was when uh, Elian painted with Alexis also in the street. I remember, like, yeah, yeah. I think was, it was during was the same time. Yeah, and that video with uh, Alexi and Elian was one of my very first yeah. videos. Yeah, I remember. Actually, you know, as you guys are saying this, it you know, it's making me nostalgic a little bit. But can we, is this, can, can, can this, will this ever come back, this kind of community part of it? That's, because it's like, that was what made this whole scene so tight and why it kind of lasted for a long time is that all of us sort of liked seeing each other and like traveling and being around each other in a way that's different than other art scenes. Like, are we going to be able to get that back? Oof. Like you just showing up at the juxtapose clubhouse and doing a mural. Like that's kind of stuff like is super fun. And like, it's just about all of us being friends and m making things happen. Like, will that can come back? pandemic can help a little bit about that you know like the 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 lack of trouble the the maybe create this other i don't know little projects without so many logistics or so many production around that create another communities that can help just to not just not a restarted but just to you know, be more focused uh in the in the community that we can create about around there not not only about the, the the friends and the community around friends, also the community in terms of you go into some place or you work in the public space there and you create a little connection with those little communities. I mean, also it's a, it's a bit nostalgic and romantic about, about about those period of time where before the explosion of the festivals. I know that after so many years things change greatly, uh, but I think pandemic can I don't know just make us think or create project that not necessarily has to be so massive take out of the murals out of the art scene it was the community for me community like worldwide community that create that thing it's wow it was it's, it's so deeply inside that i don't doesn't matter where i go i know that it's some friend or some place to show up and do it something with them and hang out it's it's great we kind of touched on this earlier. Can you maybe talk to us about the influence of Barcelona? Yeah, I mean, I I I think I have two two different uh, times with uh, Barcelona. And once was the first that I just visited, that it just knocked me out and made me think uh, public space, graffiti, and all that in a different way. And then the other time was 
10 years later, when I decided to move to Barcelona and establish there, rent a house, rent a studio, and make me my day by day work and live in a totally different different way. I mean, the, the, the easy way to travel from Barcelona to anywhere in Europe, uh, be more connected with, um, with things that maybe in Argentina are not so exploded, like, uh, like art scene or mur even mural scene. I mean, I, I, I've been in the Spanish scene that is quite big and very, very um, developed in many levels. That helps me a lot. I mean, helps me a lot, but at the same time, take me a lot of the influence that gives me my, my hometown and the craziness of Latin America that for me, especially in my work, is one of the keys of my whole uh, language or my whole imaginarium. So give me the tools and give me the, the facilities to make uh, many things, projects, materials, connections, uh, work in a kind of more professional way. At the same time, takes me uh, this day by day of uh, madness that is live in, a, in Latin America in general, that it keeps you inspired if you are focused in that, especially that it's in my case, that I'm focusing what happened in, in our day by day or in the history and the cultures. That's why I also came back here, just to re reconnect with those things. All the Barcelona background in the terms of a uh, way to work, uh, uh, materials, logistics, uh, production, uh, I don't know. No, it's is that mixed uh, mix mixed uh, mixed way of work. Like get inspired from here, take this uh, all the tools from there, and that's why I try to keep in contact with both with both worlds. But definitely Barcelona helped me a lot in the in in, in that day by day in the uh, yeah prof 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 uh, no, in, the, in the way make more professional. Uh, and the easy way of travel. That's something that I really, really miss. <laughs> I mean, travel, getting in an hour in totally different reality. That's something that I, that it's quite really, really good about there. How is Barcelona as an art city now? I feel like Barcelona might be similar to San Francisco in that it, um, the in, like maybe it, it, it died down maybe certain parts of its culture and now it's, now it's a little bit more of a professional city, but I, I, I don't know if that's true, but how is Barcelona now? I mean, I, it's, I think Barcelona, it's, uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite calm in terms of, I mean, everybody thinks that Barcelona is a really vibrant city in terms of culture and the art scene, but we don't have to forget that Barcelona, it's a really touristic and very yeah, yeah, yeah. party and has the beach and had that thing that it's, even bigger than what is happening in terms of culture and the, all the tourism and all the explosion of the city in the in this touristic way i think it's something that that affects a lot in the culture in barcelona um, being there for so many years give me that perspective that for example madrid is more vibrant in that in that thing the the scene is more tight um, I mean, of course, that is the focus. Uh, Barcelona, it's it's a really good place to be. Has an amazing quality of life. You mm. can be there very chill, very relaxed, and be producing and working and connected through the airport. But in the local terms, it's uh, quite quite chill. I mean, uh, all the friends from the scene, uh, I see them like regularly, but it's not something that is like super tight, like. Like I feel when I was in visiting Madrid, for example, no, like very vibrant. I mean, things happen, pa, pa, pa. One, another show, another show, another thing, another project. In Barcelona it was more okay. This month we have his. This month we have that. Uh, we are very chill. Let's go to take a beer. It's more <laughs> relaxed in that way. Is that new for Madrid, or has Madrid always been like that? I, I, I can't tell really because uh, I mean living there you you have that other perspective but definitely it's something that me and all the, the, the Barcelona artists every time that we visit Madrid especially during the time of the first the Arco and all those first uh, you can get this boom it's like an of our Basel but there uh, we've been talking always the same like wow guys here the things are really really excited really in action uh, why in Barcelona we can I don't know 
make or create this kind of uh, connection. Is Barcelona still quite a cheap city or is it starting to go like London or Paris? It, it's going, but slowly. Definitely it's more cheaper, more affordable than, than Paris, London. It's more like like Berlin, no? It's that kind of way. You can okay. you can rent a studio in, in the city. You can't go you, you don't need you don't necessarily have to go really far to, to get your your warehouse studio. Uh, rent is cheap. Uh, it's a really fun city. That's the thing of Barcelona. It's it's still quite small, very well connected, very very clever in terms of very intelligent. Okay, you take this and you go easily in that way. You can go biking anywhere. I mean, in, in that thing, it also I think all those situations create a very relaxed and city that is not hectic, like like London or New York. No, yeah, you are like boom 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 information information. Barcelona is more like okay, let's go to the beach, <laughs> chill out here in the bar, drinking my beer, drinking my coffee. It's, it's more in that mood. God, I miss that. That sounds so good. Should we talk a little bit about your art? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to know if like, I, I wanted to know just a little bit, like, have you had a productive year? Because I feel like Doug and I have talked to a lot of artists this year where it's been a mixed bag. Some people have felt inspired, some people have been focused, some people have had no other option but to do this. But to just make art in their studio that, like, are, I just want to start off with how has these 12 months been for your productivity? Wow, uh, what a year. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I started this the, the last year, the 2020, in a, in a residency in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, that's supposed to be four months of full immersion immersion of a residency a really good residency the McCall Art Center that it's quite big very complete they have all the facilities to do whatever you want for during those four months and I started in January uh, in the middle of March of course as everybody knows this was lockdown they closed so I get stuck in North Carolina for seven months <laughs> fuck wait you were there for seven months Seven months in North Carolina in Charlotte. Charlotte right now, it became a very important city for me because I was there for so long. And Ooh. during this crazy period of time, I wasn't allowed to travel to Spain. I wasn't allowed to travel to Argentina. So I had to stay there. Shit. And that gave me that mix, of course, a really immersive creativity period of time during the three months that I was allowed to use the residency. Totally free, uh, full of uh, resources. Wait, wait. They, they, they kicked you out? They told me like, okay, Franco, we, you can't came to the residency anymore. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they give me the, the apartment for another month, but I was lucky enough that a friend of mine who lives there uh, borrowed me a house. So I stay in a house there for all those months. And at the same time, I, was, I set up a small studio in the back of uh, of the place, the first month, the first month and a half of the of the lockdown, it was quite hard in terms of. Uh, I mean, of course, energy energetically for everybody, but I was there without the chance to going back home, dealing with embassies and dealing with uh, air co uh, air companies and all those madness. So I wasn't really into keep producing. But little by little, once that I that I have this perspective that I'm gonna be in Charlotte for a long period of time, and say, okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start to work again, and I take some things that I was doing during the residency a couple months before, and I keep working into that in this small space that I can that I can create in this background, just ordering everything through on online and getting goods and and work. But uh, without any, any, any perspective, because, I mean, like everybody know, we are waiting. It was just limbo. You didn't know if it was going to be a week or a year. <laughs> yeah, imagine. I, I landed in, in Jan 4th of Jan January 4th in Charlotte, and I lived August 1st. So it was all those period of time just there and living my day by day in Charlotte. That is a nice city, cool city. <laughs> How did this affect your artwork and the direction you were taking with it? 
it helped me a lot because during the time that I was allowed to use the residency, I have so many tools and materials and facilities that I start to to use my, you know, that I've been working in collage and working with paper for the last couple of years. And during the residency, I start to work in the same kind of language and the same kind of material, but in a very different way. And I think right now, especially right now, after all that year of just testing and, and proving different materials and different ways to do collage, right now I think that it's uh, more crystallizing something that I can that I can feel as a new production or as a new body of work. That, that the good thing in perspective of 2000 or, or 2020, it was like, uh, okay, no perspective at all, just work and prove without any pretension. And, and it was really good in, in, in that way. I, I really appreciate that cut of, okay, just I'm here. I'm going to prove these materials. I'm going to prove these languages that I've been learning. And right now I'm feeling that something is showing up. I hate to bring it up, but you were in the middle of the American South during a pretty tumultuous year, um, bo both politically and socially. Um, and Charlotte, Charlotte is in its own form of evolution at the moment, and it's it's changing. But it, you know, traditionally, North Carolina um, is definitely the one of the capitals of the South. Did 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 you feel any tension or any changes during this kind of year being in, in, Amer in the American South? Yeah, totally. Totally, and okay. especially because I was day by day, every day with locals. All my friends there have been locals, people from there, from North Carolina since ever. First of all, I, I, it was like not my first time, but one of the first time that I spent so much time in the South of the States. And I was lucky enough to travel all around the States for many times. And so I have a little bit a good perspective of how different it is from west to north to south right, to right. east all. and it was really good to be there and see that changing all the all the politically political um, different uh, thoughts that the people been talking about uh, i was there during the black like mother first first march and for me it was very shocking i mean being there see the problem in the in, I mean, being an, a, a foreigner, see the perspective, talk with people, uh, understand all the all the layers of that problem, how deep is in the in some societies, especially in the south. Uh, so for me, yeah, it was a full learning of uh, that problematic, but always with my perspective. Uh, with the pandemic, the, with the pandemic in the middle, that that was for create a whole bizarre situation. Is it just me or do you seem to be kind of drawn to this? This idea of political struggle from Buenos, Aires, you know, from Buenos to Aires to Barcelona fighting for independence. Doug, you, you're getting on my train of thought right now. It's like the whole of America and you just happen to find yourself right there. Of course, that it, it, uh, I'm really interested in that in general, in all the societies and all the situation. It's something that really affects my art and my whole thing. But always try to keep... Um, a distance and be very respect about situations that I'm not full uh, full knowledge. I know that I can see it, and it's something that you you can see that is there as a foreigner. But I talking with people there, you really can feel how deep is in some in 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 in, in the society, especially in North Carolina. For me, there was a huge learning about that. It's interesting because your artwork has this sort of theatrical, like storytelling to it, and it's like I feel like you, you, like you were in a situation where like that's got to help that kind of creative get your creative juices flowing, like um, just being able to set the stage for like these clashes and these kind of these moments of of change. It, I, I imagine your life, you've been able to kind of capture kind of an interesting uh i don't know i guess it's like a interesting thread of creation mm -hmm. i don't know the there was a i'm not quite sure what the question was but like yeah <laughs> i think it came from uh being living in a in, in in a country with so eclectic history for the last hundred years i mean six dictatorships in hundred years 
economical crashes, highs and downs. I mean, always been interested about that. Uh, and then, of course, it was this theater, stage design in my family, in my background, that it helps me just to have a, a clear kind of st storytelling about all those things. And um, yeah, I mean, it's something that I'm very interested about, uh, but also my time in Spain as a foreigner gave me another perspective of, of that. Uh, I just leave behind all those struggles, all those clashes, and I have been more focused in, uh, in, in kind of my day by day and, and experience as a foreigner. And I think that affects me a lot in the, in the last hard work that I have been doing. Uh, I'll always come, come back into those old uh, subjects that I'm still really interested in. I'm still searching and learning, especially in the art history, about uh, Argentinian history. But um, also I've been, okay, I, like I need to calm down sometimes and I just going to work with my closest things. I know, you know, like those intimacy situations, uh, that's why you show up a lot of my cat, my, my chair, my living room in the last times, uh, because being living in outside and being connected with my friends and my family through the devices and through the phone and in the distance, put me in this kind of, I don't know, I don't like the, the, the melancholic or nostalgic, um, perspective but more into this intimacy closer things closest inspiration and, and that create another body of work that helps me just to not not relax but just to not think in being thinking all the time in these uh, clashes and highs and downs that also affect me because my family and my whole history is connected with those situations when I look back over your career and, and I remember even just when I first started seeing your work, there's so many different stages that of what jazz or Franco are. And I wonder if you could maybe just sort of what was informing this change in visual language that you were using? Was it the materials or was it something else? In my case, since the beginning, I think it's uh, this huge connection with materials and uh, the way to create uh, a language through them. And through them also, it's why I, I've been switching interest or aesthetics also, even with the risk of what, it, what it happens through there. Because if when I paint, I paint in a way. When I do collage, I, I, I do collage in another way because I, I'm more focused on what those materials can create another aesthetic, another, another, even other universe that can open. Most of the time I talk or people talk about uh, the image that I create, but not so much about the materials, but materials definitely for me are as, as much in, as important as the, as the histories that I create through them. I think also that came because of my background in stage design, where I have to, to work with different tools. Uh, also, I studied in the ceramic school, so ceramic school gave me like the the side of work with uh, with with volumes or in sculpture, and and yeah, they, even when I was painting graffiti and murals, materials was was being there around and changed the the way that I approached the murals. Can you talk about that for a bit? Because I remember when you were painting a mural in London and you were using tar. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would just assume that we're using materials. You're talking about like spray paint, but you're talking about some really different materials. Can you maybe talk about some of these for a little bit? What was maybe one of the weirder uh, materials that you used? Yeah, I mean, it was during that, that time or that period of time that I was um, focusing use materials that have some kind of connection. And um, during that time, I using tar as a, one of the most, but also I paint a lot of murals with lime. Uh, that lime, it's very common for political advertising in Latin America in general. For example, if a president wanna get votes, they make those huge name more, more graffiti than politic with lime. And uh, it's a whole, tradition about uh, political uh, propaganda through lime and, um, and those cheap materials. So I painted a lot with them. And also I paint a lot with brick that I found uh, around the mural. 
or coal from the barbecue right next to the mural. So I, I, I create those series of walls, very ephemeral also, with this idea of, of uh, ephemeral muralism, that it just should be two or three months later. And I, I consider now, uh, in a perspective, one a very, very interesting uh, period of time of my murals. Maybe it was so uh, no out of Argentina because it was mostly the only place that I that I've been doing those murals, uh, because of course you know, the festivals exploded and they want the murals permanent. And every time that I that I try to work with those materials, the production uh, in the festivals get kind of. Uh, worried about. Uh, so it was a, <laughs> that period of time that I've been exploring with muralism and very, very raw TV materials. Uh, in one time, I, I remember I've been going out to paint only with, 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 with a brush and a bucket, only that, and try to find the materials. And, and I used dust. Uh, yeah, I used the, 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 the brick that I can found in some construction. I, it was a very fun time and it gives for me gives that other uh that other level to the to the mural or to the street art that i was doing that time that create a uh, mural with these mm, shitty materials that are there just for a couple of months and then just disappear do you do the same with your canvases then i try i try a few with uh with, especially with tar i i painted a few with tar but it it reacts in a different way. I mean, when you combine with spray paint or even with oil paint in a prepared canvas, it's a material that stays there. In the, in the wall, because it's in the, especially with the sun, mm. it dries out and disappears uh, faster. That's why when I, when I started to paint in, in the studio, uh, it, was a, it was a kind of a struggle to, to recreate or have that, a connection with uh, with that uh, without those works that I've been doing in the public space. So I, I concentrate in other materials, even in other languages when I was starting more starting to paint in the, in the studios. Well, I, I'm actually curious about this because we never ask, but with, in, in terms of your murals, are there murals that are still running that you did that like you're still so proud of that people can go see now? Cause I feel like we never ask anyone about, their murals being painted over or no longer there, but like, where are some, because we have an international audience, like where are some that you still are like, I really like that one. That's like one of my favorites. <laughs> are definitely some of them that I'm still loving it. And it's those murals that I like that the people take care about it. I'm, I, I consider myself one of the one, a muralists that I wasn't so much into preserve the murals. That's also why I've been, painting with those materials. I Conceptually, I really like that idea of ephemeral muralism that always, that also can survive in the, in the digital world. So mm -hmm. I wasn't so much into leave them and, 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 and take care of them. But of course, once that you finish one of those murals, uh, it became part of the people and that people can take care of them or not. And if they take care of them, I'm happy about that. And I like to see them frequently especially people who just show them up. Uh, but I really like a three of them that I made in a period of time. One was in Italy, the other was in France, and the other was in Austria. Uh, there are mirrors that can connect between them. And I, I, I like them, I mean, because of the situation and also because the, the way that I paint them. I mean, one of them for sure is still there, still remain. Um, and I'm happy that, that it happened. And if the other one disappear, I'm I, I don't care too much. I mean, is that graffiti graffiti yeah. feeling of just letting go and, and get rusted? If if I have the chance, I I try and I and I made it a few times. Get um, uh, a, a history of what happened to that mirror, especially when they construct over it and what they destroy over it, or when somebody painted over it. Uh, I have, uh, especially here in Buenos Aires, I have a few of them that I have recorded in the whole history of those, that mural. Um, also in Brazil, I have one that it just lasts a couple, even even a year, I think. It just built a whole mural, a whole building in the middle, so it's a mural cut and and the whole building into it. 
uh, I like I like I really like that that feeling. I I don't care if uh, if it disappears or if people paint it over. I think it's part of it. As a veteran of the street art and mural scene, <laughs> that good way How of putting you it. You've seen uh, this scene change over the years. Is there a real big difference between the way the culture operates in Barcelona to Buenos Aires, for example? Yeah, so definitely it's different. We, we have a lot of common, of course, especially when you start to travel and you start to talk with, with other artists around the world. You, you can feel that it's something in common, a route that connects all of us. But uh, of course, the different perspective or the, um, the explosion in some, some places and another uh, make another, um, another scene think differently, you know? Like, for example, uh, living in Spain, I definitely can tell that the, the way as the mural artists uh, think or work are totally different as we work here in Argentina, or especially because of the economy, you know, mm. it's, um, it's really hard to think in a, in a stability, in a, in a stability or have an, a huge studio, just think um, as maybe uh, Felipe Pantone has in, 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 in Valencia, you know, like that kind of structures here, of course, are totally difficult and different. Uh, also the, the perspective changed because here in Buenos Aires, you can still paint anywhere and people really don't care. So you can be focused more into just pen, paint and hang out. Uh, that in Barcelona, for example, I even paint in, Bar in Barcelona during the time that I was living there because it's so bureaucratic, has a wall, has the permission, all, all the steps that you have, make, you have to make. Um, or, or my friends in Miami, how different is the, the, the scene in, in a place like Miami where, where you have the art Basel every year or all the, the thing that happens there. I mean, definitely it's, it's different. Uh, the, of course, the, uh, some are more professional, some are more, I don't know, more romantic in the way of approach in the murals. Many years happened since, since the first time that I started to travel. So also the whole scene, we, all, we, we know that it changed a lot. It was maybe 15 years ago, it was crazy to think about projects and festival or travel around the world or even have a, a, a room in a hotel in a festival. It was the first festivals. It was just everybody in the floor all together, one machine for everybody. Let's like very grassroots festivals like Living Walls. I remember Living Walls in Atlanta the first time. How, how rusty was the whole production and how grow up all that perspective um so yeah the whole thing changed do you think this idea of having 10 bodies into a room when you wake up with your friend's ass in the face will ever come back because that's kind of how festivals were wasn't it and now artists have writers and you know they need a driver and locally sourced organic apple juice yeah 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 I mean, it's crazy for me that it was it was lucky enough to be during the transition of from that from that to this. Uh, of course, that I I see all this in a, in a very romantic and a very nostalgic way, you know. Like, but now with with uh, with how everything changed, it's it's hard to think about it. I don't I don't think it is imp that it's impossible, especially if the project is interesting enough to just leave some some uh, luxury or some logistics away and be more focused in what is the project about. I, 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 I was just talking with a, with a friend here about the, like the desert painted project, for example, mm -hmm. that is this project in the Navajo Nation in the middle mm -hmm. of the desert that, uh, I mean, if, if, if I have the chance to come back with, uh, in a project like that with any kind of... Uh, uh, luxury or any kind of logistic just to go and have the chance to be involved in a, in a, in a grassroots project like that. Right now, I have no problem. I mean, it's something that if the project is interesting enough, I have no problem just to leave something behind. Shout out Chip Thomas. He was a guest on the podcast at the sort of tail end of last year. One of the one of the best people going. Yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about, and the kind of uh, the Void Projects team always seem to manage to capture this because you did Carencia as well, didn't you? Thinking it was it was it was the last project like that that I have been 
it was 2018, I think. It was not so far from Barcelona. Yeah, I spent a couple of days there. I, I wasn't I wasn't one of the guys that has spent three months there, like mm -hmm. some of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But at least that period of time that I was there, it was like, wow, that was, it was just a sparkle of what it happens during those times. And it was really cool to, to, to go in back into that. It was a really, really cool project. I really enjoyed it. And I, I always uh, like supporting the, the Axel project because, you know, there are something like that that can happen. It's like, boom. <laughs> yeah, you forget how much like the Living Walls and Fame Festival, like those things were so, so special at the time. I think I went to Fame in like 2011 and it had even at that point, I think Angelo was kind of like, all right, like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's run its course, course <laughs> even then. Yeah, and it, as as he saw the kind of, the dramatic change in how the, the scene was being uh, sort of uh, commercialized and he stopped it. And I thought that, and I, I remember seeing all the tourists in town, even there. And I was like, wow, this, this stuff is changing. And the person I was with was like, oh man, this shit's about to blow up. It's not good. Or it was good. I mean, it was kind of a weird, uh, it was a weird moment. Yeah, I think it lasts the time that it has to last. And it definitely set up something that then explode but th those are the kind of project that as, as i talk that it creates an, uh, an, uh, an interest that doesn't matter uh, if you have to sleep on the floor or you eating with uh, with gilda or you you have to drive your own the track because angelo doesn't drive and you have to go by <laughs> yourself anywhere like it are that kind of project that during that time uh, give the attentions to even big names even during that time. I mean, because JR or Seamus, everybody, Connor Harrington, all, everybody show up there because of the experience that uh, Angelo can create around there. I mean, those kind of projects uh, started in that way, self uh, financiate making ceramics, all that kind of thing. It's, it, it, was, I mean, it, it was part of that time. It's, it's, I also, I feel that it's kind of hard to even think in replicate something similar because it already happened. But uh, right. what, what the pandemic thing create, I think it's maybe rethink the public space in a different way. You know, that it's, it's, it's harder to get into galleries and to massive shows. So I think public, public space art can has another, another point of view, another perspective. Where do Franco and Jazz meet? And then where do they separate? This is a therapy question. I like this. Here we go. Wow. We waited this long to do a therapy question. This is good. This is good stuff. I like it. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. That's why I always talk about kind of two different things that try to create bridges. Jazz, it was, it was I, I don't know. I, I even can say that it still has the same... Um, influence for me as Franco has since the beginning. They talk a lot together. <laughs> They're still on good terms. <laughs> They're still in good, good, in good terms. Sometimes jazz affects a lot, but I don't know. I mean, I've been making me this same question for so many years, especially <laughs> when I make a switch and I start, uh, especially to study more with a uh, with local artists, and one thing that I remember they they always they always uh, been saying it's like a it is the same thing. But for me, that I was living through these two different careers, two different uh, point of view. The people who see one thing is not the same people who see the other thing. And sometimes uh, we know that uh, the the traditional art scenes have been very reactive to the or, or very they try to avoid like. The, the whole public space art scene in some point and that affects of course that affects your your way of think your your studio work so that interaction from one side to other it's something that some sometimes has been really really hard uh, i'm very very conscious about it i'm i think a lot about into into that and at least in my city, especially in Buenos Aires, one thing that I'm really interested in is in to create uh, bridges between both. Not only through my work, not only between jazz and Franco, between one art scene 
well, other are seen that if in, in some point can be totally independent one from other. It, it's something that we talk a lot, a lot with other artists uh, from here, like for example, Elian, Elian Charlie. It's it's a big partner in this kind of unfinishable struggles and talkings and talkings about wh what which is our our profile or which is our or uh, or place into the whole contemporary art scene especially in Argentina if we are still in a cage if we are still the graffiti writers and we have we can get out of there or, or we can bring something from here and put it there and the same in the in the, in the opposite that's how Franco and Jazz still talking about like uh, okay if if we if I don't go into that direction uh, they never, they never gonna know what happened into this other direction. I, I'm not talking that, that I'm super important, that I'm the key man who is doing this kind of uh, oh, uh, <laughs> people uh, art scene know each other. No, it's it's more a personal thing that I that, that I starting to do these things many years ago, and helped me in in even think my work in a different way because I have that other perspective that helps me to to think that other perspective. And I guess when you're 15 years old, that's not exactly something you're thinking about. No, at all. Yeah, no. Uh, you have to imagine that um, I, I, I came from a family of painters and an artist. And do graffiti was like, okay, I don't want to think about this. Is, this is something else. This is something that is not what my grandfather is doing in his studio. So <laughs> at that time, I don't care. It was more this, this kind of rebellion that was to go to paint graffiti. How does the family think about your uh, the paintings and collage work now? I mean, they are really into that. I, I was okay. lucky enough in that time to make a show with my grandfather a long time ago. Uh, I mean, they they have the of course it's hard for family to have a, a perspective uh, without being a family. Yeah, right. Uh, right. They of always, course, they always <laughs> being very, 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 very supportive. Very. They are being there all the time. Even when I was painting graffiti out in the streets, there, my mom was like the first uh, kind of um, eye winner, like, oh, watch out, it's somebody coming, like being painted. So uh, they've been okay since the beginning. Yeah, it was very chill. So she's always trying to hang your work on her fridge? Of course, she got everything, everything, all the prints, yeah. all the things, like, come on. <laughs> It's funny because usually when we do this, it's like, you know, there's like something coming up. There's a show yeah. coming up. Or and yeah. and with you, it's like we both just kind of went, let's talk to Jazz. Yeah, we were, we're Doug, Doug and I literally like, we just, we just like him. Let's just do, let's just do the podcast. So is there anything that you're working on or anything uh, that you want to pre-sell us? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still in the process that I started during the residency, beginning of last year. Wait, are you still in Charlotte? Still in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm creating a, a whole, I'm producing a bunch of new pieces based on that, uh, focusing a show that the pandemic allowed me, I'm going to do it in the middle of the year. But then at the same time, I'm, I'm producing a lot for local projects that not necessarily are are now outside like uh, uh, salons and, uh, and projects in local places and I'm focusing that too, producing for that. I mean, in terms of worldwide situations, may I travel back to Barcelona and I'm going to stay there for a while also producing for, for the show in July. Uh, basically, that's like the horizon right now in the middle of the pandemic. I know Europe right now is more locked down than here. Uh, it was the opposite during the time that I was in Charlotte. So uh, mm. I'm happy enough just to be here and can go in out and have small vacations and oh. travel around the country. All right. So I have this is a, this is a, a question that's been simmering since you said you were time in Charlotte. Um, Southern barbecue or Argentinian barbecue? Oh, I mean, I'm quite different because, um, right. you know, ribs, yeah. ribs, for example, here is not something that we eat as, as there. I, I, get, I, I fall in love with ribs there, like especially yeah. Southern way of Maiden. I was really into going yeah. into the Southern barbecues there because of the whole setting up. It was amazing. 
Yeah. The times that I was before the pandemic, where I have the chance to travel around Charlotte, going into the country and visiting the flea markets and the local markets and the barbecues around there, man, that was amazing. That was great. Uh, but I'm really happy also to be enjoying the, the local the local barbecue here that I was missing for so long. Like right there, just setting the fire in the in the floor in the ground and throwing right. the things there. No, no. Especially in the places what, what? I'm right now, it's wait. It's it's Friday night. What's going on, on the grill tonight? Tonight tonight is the is the is the day that I come back to the city. So that's my today's my last day here. So tonight okay. I'm gonna be eating something that I have in the fridge. It's not so much not so much more. <laughs> so there you go. That was it. That was our conversation with one of Argentina's finest meaty exports. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed that one as much as we did. As always, hit us up on the socials. Tell us nice things. We'll be back with you guys real soon. Look after yourselves and each other. Peace.